What do you see, Your Eminence, as the great danger in the church today? See, the great danger is that we would be only a social uh, association and not uh, founded in the face of the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, for the first moment, it seems important only what we are doing, and the face appears not so important. But if uh, disappears the face, all the other things are discomposed, as we have mm -hmm. seen. So mm -hmm. I think the uh, danger in this time with all these activities and the external visions is to underestimate the importance of faith and mm -hmm. to lose the faith, even a church where the faith would not be so essential. I was surprised to hear that that was the biggest danger he saw in the church. But we see it's so easy for our faith to become just what we do. But that faith is so needed that trust in Christ and belief in him in the Eucharist. And now he talks about the joy of the faith. If we have uh, young people really with the joy of the faith and uh, with the radiation of this joy of the faith, this will show to the world, even if I cannot share it, even if I cannot convert it in this moment, mm -hmm. here is the way to life for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. As you know, this YouTube channel is called The Joy of the Faith. So when he said The Joy of the Faith, I smiled. And now he will talk about the liturgy. Let's talk for a moment about the Second Vatican Council uh, and particularly the implementation of the council. You've written so much about this and talked so much about this. For people of my generation, I suppose the thing that most stands out from the faith of our fathers and grandfathers is the liturgy, the mass. You have spoken about the reform of the reform, reforming the reform. How do you see that actuating? How do you see it concretely taking shape as we move forward? Generally, I would say it was not well implemented, the liturgical reform, because it was a general idea now. Liturgy is a thing of the community. The community is representing himself, and so with the creativity of the priest or of the other uh, groups uh, so will create their own liturgies, mm -hmm. more uh, the presence of their own uh, experiences and ideas uh, than uh, meeting with uh, the presence of the Lord mm -hmm. in the church. And with this uh, creativity and the self-presentation of the community is disappearing the essence of liturgy because the essence is that we can uh, go uh, over our own experiences and receive what is not from our experience, what is a gift of God. Mm -hmm. And so I think we have to restore not so much uh, certain ceremonies, but the essential idea of liturgy to understand mm -hmm. in liturgy we are not representing ourselves, but we uh, receive the grace of the presence of the uh, Lord with uh, the church of the heaven and of the earth. Mm -hmm. And this universality of the liturgy is, it seems to me, the essential uh, mm -hmm. definition mm -hmm. of liturgy and restores this idea will also help to be more obedient to the norms, not as a juridical positivism, mm -hmm. but really as a, uh, sharing, participating what is given to us from the Lord in the church. And that sense of sacrifice and worship that you've talked about uh, so elo eloquently, how do you see that being restored concretely? Will we see a return to uh, the ad orientum posture, facing the, e the priest facing away from the people during the canon, uh, a return to the Latin, mm -hmm. more Latin in the Mass? Uh, versus Orientum, I would say, could be a help because it's really a tradition from the apostolic time and uh, is uh, not only uh, a norm, but is expression also of the cosmical dimension and of the historical dimension of the liturgy. Uh, we are uh, celebrating with uh, uh, the cosmos, with the world. Mm -hmm. We are in the direction of the future of the, the world of our history represented in the sun and in the cosmical realities. Mm -hmm. I think uh, today with the new uh, discovering of uh, our relation with the created world mm -hmm. can be understood also from the people better than perhaps uh, 
20 years ago, mm -hmm. and also is a common direction. Priest and people are in common oriented to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I think it could be a help. Always the uh, external chastes are not simply a remedy in itself, but right. could be a uh, help because it's a, a very uh, classical interpretation of what is the direction of the liturgy. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, I think it was good to translate the liturgy in the spoken languages mm -hmm. because we will understand, we will participate also with our thinking mm -hmm. and so. But uh, a stronger presence of some elements of Latin would be helpful to give the universal dimension, to give the possibilities that in all the parts of the world we can see I am in the same church. Mm -hmm. So generally, uh, Popular language is uh, is a, a good, good thing. solution, mm -hmm. solution, but uh, some presence of Latin could be helpful to have more experience of universality. I know you are working on those new liturgical, uh, this new liturgical piece of legislation that the Pope previewed mm -hmm. in his encyclical on the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. We've been hearing a great deal from Cardinal Lorenzo and and in some publications that this may be a precursor to a universal indult for the Tridentine Mass. Do you foresee that at all? I would distinguish between this future document and the problem of the indult. The future document is not a new legislation, but interpretation of given norms. So uh, uh, we have only to interpret, to clarify what is abuse and what is really uh -huh. uh, uh, application of the liturgy. In this sense, it's very limited, the possibility of this document, a clarification of abuses and clarification of norms uh -huh. uh, in this moment. The other is a different problem. I think generally uh, the old liturgy was never prohibited. We need only norms how in peace uh, apply it so that the reformed liturgy is a normal liturgy of the community of the church, but the author is always a valid liturgy of the church can be used, but in obedience to the bishops and to the Holy Father. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a great challenge I know in some parts of the church and in other parts of the church uh, they've embraced uh, uh, the Pope's call for more yes, frequent uh, yes. practice. I of think the old it's mass. important to to be open to this possibility and to uh, demonstrate so also the continuity of the church. We are today not another church as uh, 500 years ago. It's always mm -hmm. the same church and was in one time holy for the church. It's always holy for the church and it's not in another time an impossible thing. Right. You may have seen that Archbishop Granswine said that Pope Benedict was heartbroken when he heard that the Latin Mass was being restricted. And we see it in his interview here, years before that happened, that he saw the value of the Latin Mass. He was laid to rest today, so hopefully he can have some extra special intercession as he's closer to Jesus now than he was before. Please like and share this video. Have a blessed day, and God love you. And to see the full video, click the link in the top right corner.